What's up YouTube? It's Kerry Hawkins with another VectorMate tutorial. Today I kind of wanted to go over some basics of color management, talk about some Pantones and conversions to CMYK, and so forth. So let's go ahead and jump on in, alright? So on the left, this is just the way I like to do things. You can do it in a lot of different ways, but um, I find this to be a, a pretty helpful way. Um, this is coolers.co and if you go to their color generator, generator you will see something like this. Um, you can just randomly um, select some of these by hitting spacebar or if you, you know, like this color palette looked kind of neat so I just kind of went with it and drug it over here. But uh, if you wanted to generate one, you just hit spacebar and it will generate a new one for you, just like that. Um, and if you don't like that or you want to like change things on your own, it's really cool. You can lock. Say you only like these two greens, you could lock that and then hit spacebar and these three will change to do a different color palette, which is pretty cool. And then even inside of that, you can adjust these manually, either with RGB or CMYK um, and just you know, do however you need and, and get the color that you want. And then you can lock it in and hit spacebar again if you want to a couple times, just see what comes up. So pretty sweet. Uh, once you get this where you want it, uh, you could come up here and export to various um, uh, formats. Let's just do SVG. I'll come in here real quick, open this up in Illustrator. So here we are. And let me, let me just drag this back over here so we can see both. Um, and before I do anything, I'm going to set this as a CMYK because I think we're going to go with, with that first. Um, I always like to think in CMYK because it's the most limited um, color gamut that you're going to work with. Um, RGB has just got way more colors. Uh, so... Let's say we like this color palette and we were wanting to brand this for our client. Um, what I would do is kind of first figure out what the Pantone colors are. Now Pantone colors are gonna be um, these colors determined by Pantone, the company Pantone. Um, and they, they're they made with by mixing colors, kind of like when you were a kid when you mixed uh, two colors to get another color. It's like that, but they're just doing it with absolute precision, and they've got a few more colors that they're working with as bases. But that's basically what they do to try to keep your colors uniform across all mediums. Um, and so what I like to do when I'm branding a new company is start off with what is their Pantone color, and I'll go from there to find their CMYK values and their RGB values. So if we grab these, over here and then come up to edit edit colors and recolor artwork you'll get this uh, pop up right here um, now what I would do here is you can you can set the number of colors that you want it to be which is really cool sometimes but in this case we just want to leave it on auto you want to get all five colors here um, what you'll do is come down to this which limits the color group and you want to go to color books and probably start with solid coated. We'll probably want to do one of these two most of the time. Um, there are uses for these others, but this is, I mean, bread and butter right here. So solid coated is going to be if these colors are printed on something that's glossy. Um, the material, therefore, would be less porous, less absorbent. And uncoated is if it's it doesn't have gloss coat, it's going to be a more porous sub, uh, substance. But um, a lot of times, you know, you'll need both of these, but I, I, I kind of start in solid coated, just, um, I don't know, that seems to be common practice. So go there and, and it will automatically assign Pantones to each of these colors. Now we can see what they're gonna be up here. You can see the ones, or you can come in here and specify if you want to. I tend to just go with the flow and say, okay, and see how those look. And you can compare from here to here. There are some differences. This, this is, of course, all on an RGB screen, and this is trying to be a CMYK uh, representation, which means that things like this green aren't going to be as vibrant, right? 
Um, but we'll, I mean, we'll get this color when we do um, RGB stuff. But um, this is kind of what's going on here. You've got Paint Tone 360C, 575, 7485, 7698, and 563. Now these may be not the perfect colors for you, but it's usually a decent starting spot. And um, if you need to adjust these accordingly, you know, you can go into your um, uh, uh, swatch area here, swatches and open swatch library, come back to color books and open up solid coded. And there you go, are all your Pantone colors. So if you wanna find something that's a little bit better, maybe you don't like this, maybe it's not blue enough, you could always come in here and get a, a different blue. Um, so anyway, that's just something to think about. Actually, that, that's kind of cool. Um, well, let's just back up, I'll go with whatever I had. So let's use this one. Um, I just created a copy, you can, you know, control C, control V, or you can do like I do and just click and drag up while holding alt and shift. I just like to keep things in a nice, neat line. All I'm doing here to shrink it down from both sides is as I'm clicking and dragging, I'm holding alt. So that just means it's going to pull from both ends. So I'm just making a little square. Um, I want to click on this button here, which is going to convert to my CMY, CMYK palette. Um, but before I do that, this is 360C. So what you'll notice here is that Illustrator, when it converted, did this funky conversion, right? 61.46% cyan, zero magenta, 95.58% yellow, and zero uh, black, which these are just funky values. The um, point whatever is usually not something you want. You kind of want to have um, you know, 61% or 62%, same here, 95 or 96. You don't want to have the in-betweens. It's usually not helpful. It's hard to remember what that's going to look like exactly. So um, I like to clean those up. And if you go to the Pantone website, let's just go there real quick. If you come over here on Find a Pantone and then enter the number, which it was uh, 360C. So just put 360C, click Submit. <clears throat> graphic designers pops up that's the one you want click on this and it will give you the values so as you can see this one was close uh, it needs to be 63 0 and 84 so that was decently close but some of these conversions can be pretty off like sometimes it might actually put in a little magenta or black when this is telling you not to so I always reference what Pantone says um, because they're, they're usually going to be the closest. Now, that said, your printer may not print this off looking very much like this Pantone. It, it's quite possible it's going to look very different. So, you know, take this with a grain of salt, try it out. A lot of the time, this is going to be in the ballpark, but it may be dependent on how good your printer is, um, what kind of inks they're using, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, be sure to test it out if it's a huge deal. The other thing I would do, again, I just clicked and drag, made a copy. Um, you see if I'm holding shift, it's going to go straight up and down, not going to go left or right. And if I hit alt, you get the extra copy there. See the, the change in my cursor from one to two, you get the black and white. So I'm making a copy. I'm going to bring this over to RGB and it looks like 108, 194, and 74 are the values. Now you can already see that's a little bit more vibrant than this one. We're inside of a CMYK preview though, so even then it's not gonna be as vibrant as it will be if you actually save this out in RGB format. I know that's a little confusing sometimes, but that's how it works. So what I usually end up doing is just, you know, something like this, so you know that um, this is the CMYK value and this is the RGB value. And, and these are your Pantones down here, something like that. And so then you would go through, you know, make copies of each one of these um, and, and grab all of these colors over here to um, make your own CMYK and RGB values for each one of these. And they're gonna just look like this where it's slightly different. Let me drag these close so you can see. There are subtle differences here, right? I think the RGB is probably really close. Yeah, really, yeah, there's still a difference, you can tell. Um, but that's the way it's going to be 
when you set these things up for uh, a branding uh, for your client. But uh, anyway, those are just some basics of how I would go about um, changing up color palettes, choosing color palettes. You guys can do this in all sorts of ways. You can grab images offline and you use the eyedropper tool if you want to, to get colors that you like, and then go through the same process so that you can figure out what's the closest Pantone color to those values. Or you can take those values and, and uh, go into a, a site that converts RGB or CMYK into Pantones. There are a lot of different ways to do this, and some of those are better than others. Um, just try it out until you find one that you like. I tend to like coolers really well, and obviously the Pantone website is going to be really good because they're very particular about uh, the value of these uh, colors and the accuracy. So anyway... That's all I've got for today. Like, subscribe, share, do all those wonderful things for me. I'm, I'm really picking up on subscribers and I'm having a good time doing it. So thanks guys. Peace.